morning, everyone, and welcome to National Intern Week. I am your host, Andy from Career Map TV. It is great to see you all here. And today we are joined by the team at IBM to discuss their university student opportunities at, of course, IBM. Remember, during this session, it will be um, recorded. So if you have anything you missed out, don't worry. It will be up on our website and our YouTube in the coming days. If you have any questions as well, leave them in the chat and Q&A box and we'll come back to them at the end of the session uh, where Liam and I will go through them. So without further ado, I'll pass on to Liam to commence with IBM's session. Bro, thank you very much. Um, hi there, everyone. Nice to meet you. So um, my name is Liam. I, um, I work at IBM in our, in our talent team. Um, and I'm going to be running through a little bit of a presentation for you today, uh, talking a little bit about IBM uh, as a company, in case you don't know about what we kind of do. Um, and then I've got some, I'll also be talking about some university placement opportunities and graduate opportunities as well, um, just so you can kind of have everything that we, we kind of offer as a company for, for our early professional talent. Um, just to get started, I'll talk you a little bit through myself, um, as I've got a little bit of a, an interesting journey through IBM. Um, and then we'll get into a session where I talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, why IBM, why would you want to work for IBM, what does it do, um, and do we do we kind of resonate with you as a company that you might want to work for. Then, as I said, I'll, I'll talk about the opportunities that we have available. Um, we usually have the same opportunities available most years as well. So for the university placement scheme, um, obviously you have to be eligible for it and be has to be a part of your course or your uni have to approve it um, and then you have to return back to university afterwards but we also have graduate schemes as well so even if for example you're not uh, not wanting to do a placement or you can't do a placement this year it might be that you might be an employer that you want to consider in the future as well and then at the end we'll do a question and answer session as well so um, as we said you know leave any any comments in the chat um, and then what we'll do is we'll just come to those questions at the end so we'll just go flick through the chat and pick them out and then address them one by one so apologies if i don't address them when you send them but we will we will do that at the end um i've also got some email addresses to share with you as well so say for example if we do have a lot of questions hopefully we don't but you know i'm always happy to answer them and um the team here as well we have some email addresses to kind of split out between the different opportunities so if you do have any questions you, know, you can always reach out to them as well okay so a bit about me so i actually was an intern um, myself. Um, I was an intern back in ooh, 2017, I think I joined. So I was 2017, 2018. Um, I then came back as a graduate in 2019 after I finished my degree. Uh, and then now I'm actually finishing an apprenticeship. So I've kind of done quite a few of our schemes. And I think that's kind of the beauty of working for IBM is that you don't obviously apart from you know a university placement you have to be eligible in a graduate scheme you have to be a graduate um you can kind of do all the different wonderful ways of learning trying something new um all you've got to do is just make yourself you know reach out to the people that you need to so like your manager and they will help you find those opportunities so um my background and my degree was in psychology but i now work in hr and i used to work in compensation which is a, a stem of hr and then now I'm doing uh, recruitment in talent acquisition. Um, but because my background's in psychology, I don't have any accreditation relating to a, a HR qualification. Um, so I'm not sure if you know, but there's a, a HR qualification called CIPD, um, which a lot of companies recognize and, and require if you apply for any sort of HR role. Um, and luckily enough, IBM where I managed to put me on an apprenticeship where I actually get that qualification at the end of it. So it's been a long old slog. Um, but I should hopefully be finishing it in November, which would be quite nice. Um, it's been going on for almost two years now, so it'd be nice to have some more free time come back to me, um, which would be quite good. So that's a little bit about me and a bit about my journey uh, with IBM. What I'll now start to do is talk to you a little bit about IBM um, and what might be something that resonates with you, might be something that you might want to get involved with or really pushes you to want to come and work with us and apply for some of our roles so at IBM as a culture we tend to have these these three words as like a three pillars um, which kind of resonate with each of us as to why we would like to work for the company and what we can get out of the company by working for them as well so we've got possibility curiosity and individuality as well so they're quite 
keywords to remember if you come and apply for us because you probably want to include some of them in an application form hint hint wink wink um but I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about each of them as well so that you can kind of see oh yeah that that's a bit like me i think in that sort of way or that's kind of how i am as a person um and it could really help with you identifying if ibm is a potential employer for yourselves so i'll talk about possibility um and i think as I said, with my apprenticeship, I think it's a good good example to use as to kind of the things that you can do with us. So, um, for example, I've got three other words, purpose, impact and service. And I basically took my apprenticeship proposals, my manager and said, look, OK, I'd say I'm all right at my job. Um, however, I have the drive to be better and I want to be better. Um, I want to provide more purpose, a better impact and a better service, ultimately. Um, I've had a little bit of research I hear that this could be a potential opportunity. Is there a way that we could make this happen? Um, and it's very rare that people, especially your manager, for example, if you come at them with a problem like that, very rarely that they'll say no. It's almost like, a, OK, thanks for letting me know. Let me see what I can do sort of thing. But it's not a case of let me see what I can do. And that's the end of it. Um, you know, they'll go and speak to people. They know the contacts that they've got. I had a really good manager at the time. His name is Paul. Um, and he actually had some employees report to him who had previously done this path as well. So he already knew about the process. He was a great person to speak to. Um, and he allowed me to follow the similar path as them and get me in speaking to the people who I need to speak to. So it's a company in that sense, which provides those opportunities as long as, you know, you've got the drive to do it. If you want to be doing something and you've done the research and the legwork, it's very rare that people will say no, you know, because it's in your um it's it's benefits to you it's benefits to the company ultimately ultimately because they benefit from the skills that you then learn um and then these opportunities just spread throughout throughout the business so um not only is it for the employees as well but also for our clients and our business as well so um a few bits of information about what is it that we actually work with and what 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 do we actually use as, as kind of our business offerings with our clients these are kind of the five main areas which we kind of offer um, to our clients in terms of technology and services. Um, so the first one being artificial intelligence. We've got our IBM Watson system that we use and, and that, that as an offering to some of our clients. And we're not only having that as, a, as an offering, but we also have this um, IBM research department, which each of them have a, an, a better interest in each of these areas. Maybe not consulting as much, but more the technology areas. So we're not only specialize in an a offering but we also have research teams and being able to research different different ways that we can improve that system what are the current data the trends with ai and are we up to speed with those sort of trends as well so not only is it an offering and a product it's also an area of interest that we provide research for as well and the same with the ibm cloud as well um that's another potential one of the biggest offerings that we have and, and our clients are, are heavily invested in our ai and cloud platform um, so that's another technology that we offer as well. Uh, blockchain and quantum are probably like one of the niches that we offer as well. So blockchain technology is almost like a uh, electronic ledger that we have for businesses where they can keep tabs on every transaction that happens in, happens in their business. Um, one of the best examples we have is that, say, for example, farmers um, and the produce that they create, working with getting their products to market and then ultimately in the consumer's hands. Um, and blockchain technology is a great way of providing um, customers that sort of level of trust of where their products actually come from. And they can actually track from the moment that, uh, say, for example, an orange is picked from from um, from a farmer's field and then all the way to going out to the consumer's hand. And as IBM blockchain can keep a transaction of each individual process that that orange essentially passes through. So whether that's being picked, collected, cleaned, shipped, um, put in the shop, that sort of thing it can track all of that and it's um it's a technology which you would probably say well that's just easy someone just documents it but it's a blockchain is a way of securing those transactions so that they aren't falsified um it hasn't been altered in any sort of way to make it almost look better but it's a, a way of purely honest transactions being submitted so that it can be used as a, as a data reference point so um a lot of trust goes into that technology with, with our clients as well Quantum's a very interesting one as well. I had to do a lot of reading when this was at the forefront of um, IBM's Q, I think is the is a quantum computer that we have. And it's it's a way of which we can do work at an unthinkable level, you know, solving the unsolvable. Um, will these computers are, 
are a high in advance above everything else. And I believe we have the the first one that's actually been gone to market and actually is a product that our customers can actually tap into as well. Um, it's very advanced technology, um, but a, a good amount of reading should be should be read upon them to, to fully understand them. But it's also a great way, for example, if you have an interest in quantum and, and you want to demonstrate that on your um, application forms, hint, hint, wink, wink. I'll probably do that throughout the most of this session. Um, it's a great way to be able to show, you know, your understanding of IBM technology and, and especially an area which is up and coming as well. And then the last one is IBM Consulting, which is very, very different to the technology as such, but it's working with our clients to understand their business needs, their problem pain points, um, and how IBM as a company and the offerings we have can help tackle those problems. And the IBM Consulting has been growing exponentially for the last five, 10 years, um, and it's a big part of our business today. So it's where a lot of our graduate opportunities are as well, because it's it's all about it's all about bringing in new new eyes, new ideas, um, and how we can work with our clients in a better way. So I've talked a bit about possibility. Um, I'll talk a little bit more now about curiosity. So this one's more about the individual and and the ways in which we work. Um, it's all about how can we challenge what we do today to do a better job in the future. Um, and if it's if you've got if you're that type of person who's got that kind of creative thinking or always wants to say, well, why do we do it that way sort of thing? Um, we're always about trying to fix things and be more efficient and be more productive. Um, and we also have a lot of uh, resources which can help with that as well. So if you're someone who is really interested in a new area, say, for example, you come and join us and you heard Liam talk about a webinar about quantum technology and you want to actually learn a bit more about that. We have this thing called your learning, which is like, I, I call it like a library, right? So if you want a load of information uh, about a certain topic like quantum, you could go onto your learning and you could type in the word quantum. And there are teams in IBM who have put together um, learning platforms, learning badges. That's, uh, you know, when you do a course, you can get that kind of digital badge and you can showcase that you've, you, you've done learning for this on any sort of topic you can think of um even down to something silly like i mean not too silly but i think i did one on something like ios design so i was interested I'm, i have a phone um i was looking at ways in which i could learn but more about designing things and you can actually do a whole badge on how you know apple design their logos design their apps what are the actual names for certain things so like i think i learned about one where you have like certain twisties and they're called certain things you've got a, they've got some really funny names for them but it's something like that you, you you'd be surprised how many different things there are on there and you can just easily search it and do like an hour two hours watch videos on it um and it all goes towards independent learning and we're all about independent learning as well so every year every ibm needs to do at least 40 hours of independent learning which sounds like a lot but over the course of the year you probably find that you do way more than 40 hours um, and your learning is just a great way of facilitating that as well. Um, your career and your guides is also something that we offer as well. So your career is all about um, getting you in contact with and, and learning about new areas because we're all about internal mobility as well. So, so for example, when I worked in compensation, um, I worked there for a good amount of time. I think I was pretty knowledgeable about the role and the, and the processes that we have. And I think it was time for a change. I went on to your career and, and, and mentioned about the different things I have an interest in. And what it does is if any opportunities in IBM who are looking to hire internals come available, they can actually see, oh, great. We've got someone, Liam, he want, he, he's looking for a role in TA. Let's match ourselves up, have a conversation about what it is that he's expecting from the role. I can tell them a little bit more about the role. And it's a great way of finding new roles in IBM to move forward and, and progress your career. So we also have that in place. Your guide is a, something very similar and it's linked to your careers, but it's all about mentorship. So you can say to yourself, I could really do with a mentor about X, Y, or Z. Um, but also it's for people to put their hands up and be like, I know a lot about X, Y, and Z. I'd love to be a mentor and I need to pair that with a mentee sort of thing. So we have all of that in place. Um, digital badges, like I said, works with your learning. Um, and then skills build for students is also really good as well. So this is something that our corporate responsibility team put together um, and is completely free for people in and outside of IBM. Um, all you have to do is search for IBM Skills Bill and it will literally take you to the learning platform and it's a great way of learning employability skills, learning about skills about how to do 
efficient working. Um, and yes, it looks great for an application to IBM, but it's not also just for IBMers as well. Um, all of the skills and information are relevant for other jobs. Um, so if there was one takeaway that you would you should get out of today ahead of applying for internships and university placement schemes is to go and have a look at Skills Build. Um, it's a great starting platform and it'll really get you in the mindset of, okay, well, how do I come across in the best way? How can I do working? I mean, uni work could also benefit from it as well. Um, it's a really good, useful skill that I, I think you should definitely have a look at if you're interested. Um, this is a little bit of a fun slide. So it's to just kind of show you like, what does the IBM tend to have in their toolkit? Um, what kind of things do they currently use to, to work? Um, so WebEx, for example, is our main um, online, I'd say kind of like how we speak to each other. So if we'd have a call or something, we all have like a WebEx link and we all join it. We have our own chat rooms as well. So people can join yours and you can have informal calls as well. Um, we also have Slack as well, which um, is a great little tool. If anybody has Discord or knows a Discord, it's very similar to Discord. You have uh, workspaces, which are like a server, and then you have individual channels that you can talk to people and create as like group chats. Um, but it's basically our like instant messaging service that we use to talk to anybody. Um, everybody in IBM is on there, um, even our CEO, but I tend to not slack the CEO. You probably don't want to be doing that. It probably won't be heavy uh, replies. It'll probably be someone else. But um, yeah, I like Slack. We do a lot of our, you can do huddles as well, where you just have like a voice chat. It's like calling someone on the phone. I don't think anybody uses a phone nowadays. I think you can do a lot of it on Slack. Um, but yeah, it's a great little tool that we have. Um, Mural as well is a really good one. Um, that tends to be for a lot more of a collaborative kind of design thinking sort of sessions, basically like a massive cork board and you can put poster notes and separate it out into kind of, if you've got a project, you can stage ideas and brainstorm it and then solution processes as well. That's a really good one. Um, Box is probably what I use the most. It's basically like Google Drive. Um, we use it for all sort of like file sharing, but also as well when we do recruitment processes and assessment centers, you need a lot of information to be shared with different people. So you can always add people, remove people, um, do like a OneDrive where you can do like online documents and stuff. Really helpful when everyone needs to put in like comments and spreadsheets together. Really, really useful. And then Trello as well. Trello is a lifesaver for me. Um, it's a bit like a planning tool. So you, you could have a board, a Trello board. You could have different silos along this board and you can have different tasks set at each of them. But they're in like little cards so you can like pop them and put them into different ones to be like okay i'm working on this one okay i finished this one this one could be in the done column um and it's also a tool which you can add other people to as well so they can get involved um contribute to the project as well but i have that one for my apprenticeship because if i didn't have that for my apprenticeship i'd be lost i so much to remember as well as doing a full-time job that i just have to write all down on this trailer board and when i have the time i'll go back and be like ah oh, yes thank god i wrote that down because i would have forgotten that otherwise um but these are just some that, you know, it's completely free to use. Um, it's just as simple as when you start with us, they're all on our um, IBM App Store and you can get going straight away. Um, so, so maybe some good tools to have a little bit of research about as well before um, applying for a role with us because then you already know how to get, get kick the ground running sort of thing when you start with us. Um, we're all about inclusivity as well at IBM. So uh, we do a lot of things, uh, a lot of it's volunteer work actually as well. Um, it's individuals who have a particular passion for certain areas, want to spread the word and and um, and and create a lot of awareness of some important topics as well. So we have these things called uh, business resource groups, which is on the slide there. Um, and it's essentially self fund self funded. Uh, well, actually, no, I don't think it is self funded. I think it actually does get a lot of investment from business as well. But um, time driven wise, it's 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 self funded. So uh, people volunteer to be part of like a, a board. So, for example, we have a um, people with diverse abilities um, at IBM Group, which is all about creating awareness on, you know, accessibility in the workplace, um, how we can help people who need the help to work better at IBM and how we can be aware of some of the support and needs that they need um, to basically work better and, and more collaboratively. So they put on events. They had one yesterday in London, actually, um, putting on like an inclusion day, which was all about talking about, you know, different guest speakers about how they share their experiences of, of being included in things at IBM and um, and how IBM has helped them to get better at working. So having things like sit stand up desks for those who have mobility issues, um, loads of things like that that we they put on 
um, to be able to create awareness and spread the word because the more people who know and are aware, the better we can work all together as well. Um, so yeah, we have some, some really good stuff in the inclusion and um, diversity space. Our DNI leader, her name is Daniela. Um, she's a great advocate and is always so personal to be able to reach out to. And if you have any things that you should be like, oh, I don't know if, if this is something that we can get involved. Can I start a business resource group? She'd give you the support and let you go ahead to do that. You know, it's all about being able to express yourself um, the best way that you can. And I think that more moves on to our to our next one, which is the last pillar. So it's individuality. So it's all about yourself. It's all about being able to bring your full self to work. Um, and how can we do that? So, for example, the different ways that you can get involved in different things that are passionate to you. Um, we've got this thing called the IBM Service Court, which is all about, uh, I think it's like a volunteer scheme where you get basically set to a project for I think about three to five months. It's quite an extensive period, but it's where they send you to a different country who have um, maybe a certain problem that they need really need to help with. And it could be like at a government level, it could be at a local community level, but it's all about how can you provide you know, help and support for them and really listening to what the, the, the problems that they have and how we can offer you know, things as a company to them that can really benefit them. I had someone who worked on a scheme like this who went to Mexico and they were working with uh, local communities on like schooling initiatives. Um, and he said, it's just like eye opening how you take things for granted that we all have access to a school here. But over there, it's like more people don't have access to a school than do. Um, and it's how, how do we change that? You know, how can, how can IBM help that? Um, but, you know, this is totally outside of a day job, right? So IBM is, you know, saying, we need people to be involved in this and it's it's very important so it's not really about all about business 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 it's it's also about business but then it's also about doing work for the better for the world as well um some more standard ones is learning and networking events that you can go to volunteer opportunities as well so we also have a volunteer scheme where you can log the number of hours that you do volunteering maybe with like a local community or you know like scouts that sort of thing um and every hour that you volunteer is a match donation that IBM does to a charity of your choice, which is really, really good. So it's like, if you already do it, you might as well log it because someone then can then benefit from the donations as well. Um, recognition programs is really cool. So each I IBM -er gets these things called blue points, right? Um, and the best way to describe them is a bit like credit. So I might get a certain amount of blue points and for the whole year. And if someone does something that really helps me and I'm really appreciative of it, I could send them blue points and then these blue points basically equate to uh, you can buy things on this kind of catalog that we've got. Um, and, it, you know, there's some pretty good things. There's a lot of things that you'd think, right, OK, well, I'm going to just get that with my blue points because it's not costing me anything. Um, but then you can also exchange them for which is something that I do is Amazon vouchers. And then you can actually get whatever you want that's on Amazon. Um, but you don't have to pay for it. It's people who have recognized you for hard work or support. Um, and it's just their way of giving something a little bit back to you. So it um, goes a long way. Um, blue points. That's a really good one. Uh, wellness resources as well. So we've got spaces dedicated in our office for actually like looking after your well-being. Um, I'm in the IBM Hursley office today and there's actually a wellness center just across the way I can see out of the window. Um, yeah, it's just a nice place to go to where there's no laptops. Laptops are banned. You cannot take laptops there. Otherwise you get into big trouble. <laughs> Um, there's like massage chairs. There's like a there's like a space room, so it's completely black. Where and they have like um, like lounges where you can lie down and kind of like close your eyes, relax, sort of thing. Um, and it's all soundproof, but they have like um, LEDs on the ceiling, which makes it look a bit like a night sky. And it's just to kind of zone out for like 10, 15 minutes, however much time you need. Especially because you know we all appreciate that full time jobs they can be stressful. There's gonna be highs. There's gonna be lows. Um, but having a space which is safe enough to go to uh, and kind of get away from it if you need to is, is really, really important. Um, and we have a lot of those um, sort of toolkits and, and help and support on site as well, which is really good. Cool. So I'm, I'm a bit ahead of schedule, but that's fine. Um, I wrap it on a bit too much. But what I'll, I'll do now is we'll just move on to the next session, which is about opportunities, which is probably more of the things that probably most interested to you guys about what you want to apply for, um, things like that. So as I mentioned at the start, we'll talk a little bit about interns um, and university placement schemes first. 
um, and then I'll talk a little bit about the graduate opportunities as well because we have we open for for graduates externally as well but then we also have a bit of like a, a we call it our I2G which is intern to grad um, it's all about kind of the the interns who have been with us for 12 months we do like a a big piece with them called a careers academy where we put like a, an event on with all these different opportunities and you can kind of go to workshops you can go to talks listen to like what they have to offer to see whether it's something that you'd like to apply for and then before your um, placement finishes you can actually submit an application form to apply back as a grad um, and some people even get offers before they even leave which is really nice because you head back to, to university for a year you don't have to worry about you know having a look for a job after you finish you can really focus on your last year at uni get your studies in um, that all important dissertation as well so it's a nice little work hard throughout those 12 months apply back for a grad opportunity and it could it could really be good for the last year I'm not having to worry about that um, so cool I'll start with the university placement scheme so um, we do have a number of different roles uh, in a number of different offices um, so for example our main one is London we have a lot in London so if you look London based and you look for London that's really great we do have some as well, not as many as London, but we do have some in Manchester, Warwick and Hursley. So if you're someone who's open to traveling, um, I was based in Loughborough um, for my university and then I moved all the way down to, to Hursley um, for my placement, placement year, um, which was fine. They do a, they do a good job about um, connecting you with other people who are also based at the same location and doing a, a university placement as well. So I reached out to a couple of guys in the labs who were doing software development ones and we managed to find a place together um, and I'm still friends with them now you know it's a great way to a bit like university where you get into halls and accommodation and in first year and stuff um, and you make some really good colleagues at work and you do things after work it's really good um, 12 month scheme so it's it's just one year basically for that uh, placement year and then starting salary as well is 22k um, which is actually I actually really are happy about this because when I first started uh, in 2017 it was 16k uh was it 16k i think it was 16k and a 1000 pound sign on bonus um which was not a lot back then i think it was a lot um higher for other places but we've managed to well so i don't want to brag but since i've been in the team i've been basically saying like we need to be a bit more competitive and we've been looking at um, competitors as well and this year we actually managed to increase that to 22 um so no sign on bonus is just 22k um for the whole year um so it was nice to have a six grand increase since when i was there so it's, it's nice to to be able to be more competitive with a company um and then when we talk about the placement so what is it that we actually ha have on offer so um we do business hr marketing technology software development and design as well so those are the different kind of areas that we recruit for um to be able to do a university placement you do have to be eligible um, and they're only for people in their penultimate year of their undergraduate degree looking for a year in industry. So to, to determine whether you'd be eligible or not, if you're doing a four year course um, where you have that one year, so third year out of the four is dedicated to doing a placement. Great. Absolutely fine. You'd be eligible if you are doing a three year scheme. But you know that there are some people on your course who are doing four years and you have the ability to change to four years. Um, you could still be eligible. You just need to go and check with the university that you can still change that and apply. Um, but when you apply, you will need to confirm that that is the case. So best, best to check that with the university first before you apply. Otherwise, we'd probably see that you're not eligible and then we would um, we would close out your application. So best to check that with the university first. Um, scheme lasts for 12 months and can be based nationwide. Uh, and those are the different areas that we have based for our locations. Um, we also have a, an interesting group called Foundation um, as part of IBM. So when you join, you have a thing called a task manager, which is basically like, okay, this is my role. This is the manager who I work with for that role. Um, but we also have an early professional manager, which is provided by Foundation. Um, and they're essentially another manager, but you can speak to them about anything, provide support, um, they also do your kind of review, so your three month review, your six month review and your 12 month review. But they're basically a support care system there for you for, for any, whether it's personal reasons, you don't want to talk to your task manager about it, they're there for you. If you want to talk about your task manager to someone, they're there for you. Um, any sort of HR related queries, uh, you know, 
time and leave sickness, that sort of thing. They're very knowledgeable and they'll be able to support you with that. They they almost become like they they are there to kind of shape you as a career perspective, and then your task manager is there to, to shape you from a role perspective. Um, and you have them for the whole year as well. They become a big part of your placement journey. My my placement, uh, my university uh, early professional manager. Her name was Helen. She was wicked. She, uh, you know, I I did a my placement in HR as well and she did all the HR interns um, as their professional manager and she worked with us quite closely as well because she has to be knowledgeable on, on HR stuff as well um, so I used to see her quite a lot um, have a good chat with her other reviews are always a good laugh um, and they, they, they become like a real good friendly face um, and support network as well so and, and a resource definitely to make good use of okay and then some um, important information as well so I don't know maybe you already do know maybe you don't know um, we actually do have applications open at the moment as well. So um, we currently run uh, exploration sessions, which is basically the same as an assessment center um, within four weeks of you applying. So the different roles that we have open at the moment is business and technical consultants. Um, they're open right now. And what I've, did, what I've done as well is I'll pop some links in the chat as well, just so you have them. Um, so if you are interested in applying, we have technology and business consultant, they're open now and they close on the 1st of October. Okay, so not long that they're open uh, for. They've been open since last Monday. Um, so about two weeks, they say before. We get so much interest that we don't keep them open for that long because we don't want to have more people and then them sit around and not be able to progress through the process. So if you're interested in about applying for a business consultant or a technical consultant, the link to apply um, should be in the chat right now. Um, the software development youth university placement scheme that actually opens on Monday. Okay. Um, and I have put a link in there, um, as well to apply for that. Don't worry if you click on it and it takes you nowhere. It says not available. Um, it will be open come Monday morning. Um, it's because it officially opens then. So, um, the link won't work until it goes live, but it will go live on Monday. Um, and it will be open for a week. I believe we do get a lot that come through on that week. So. Um, it doesn't take much to apply. You literally go on, you fill out a few details and you click submit. And what I'll do is I'll talk a little bit about what the process actually looks like on the next slide. Um, and then we also have HR and marketing, which will be opening. Um, that is, I haven't got a link for that one at the moment as well, because that one is still to be decided. But um, at the moment, it's the 2nd of October. It might be the 3rd of October. Um, but the best thing to do is uh, at the end, I've got some email addresses as well. Um, you can put yourself forward to be notified when that goes live. Or ultimately, you can also follow this link, which is a register your interest link. Um, takes us to our to our site called Yellow, where you can fill out a form to be like, yep, my name is such and such. This is my email address. I am interested in HR and marketing. Please can you notify me when it goes live. And that is the best way to receive uh, to receive notifications um, so that you can you don't miss that deadline and can apply straight away. Um, those are the ones that we've got open at the moment. Uh, we will be opening more after uh, we've kind of finished this sprint. It's likely to be in November sort of time. So, again, best way to be uh, updated with those opportunities is to go to that link um, and be able to, to register your interest for any sort of scheme that you're interested in as well. And that works for graduates as well. So, yes, I'm saying a lot about university placement at the moment, but you can also go onto that link and be like, hey, I'm interested in a graduate scheme, this, this and this. Please notify me. Um, it's the best way to do it. Myself, I use that tool a lot to contact candidates. So I look after the software development ones, for example. And my colleague, Emma, she's currently doing the business at Technical Consultant at the moment. And then we'll both do the HR and marketing um, as well. So I do grad an intern for software development. Um, so I'm, I'm the person to speak to if you need to ask any questions about that. Um, I'm also knowledgeable in other areas, um, but um, I'll particularly be your point of contact for, the, for those roles as well. So graduate schemes as well. So uh, we've actually been nominated quite a lot for our uh, graduate scheme and we've won uh, Target Jobs Employer of the Year for graduate schemes for the last five years in a row, which is, I didn't think we were going to get the fifth year. I mean, oh, to be fair, any, any year you kind of get, you're kind of blessed to be getting them anyway. So um, we offer graduate roles in consulting, design, software development, technology as well. Um, and graduates join basically as a permanent employee. So yes, it's called a graduate scheme. Uh, and they usually last for about two years. But once you finish those two years, it's not like a case of, okay, that's it. See you later sort of thing. 
you are a permanent employee. So whether you stay in the area that you're in, or you could then potentially think about, okay, I've done two years doing this. I might want to try something else. You're a permanent employee then. So it, it doesn't matter. You don't, you're not pressured into to finding anything. It's completely up to you if you want to or not. Um, and the starting salary for graduates is 32,000 pounds as well. Um, it is a starting salary. Obviously the, the graduate scheme does come with career progression opportunities as well, but it's, it, we can't tell you what that will be. It's purely down to the individual performance, that sort of thing. So, but 32,000 is, is the starting salary for, for everything across the board. Um, and then a little bit of uh, things about what we kind of look for. Um, this is in individuals, in applications, that sort of thing. Um, these are our kind of uh, aptitudes that we kind of look for. So courageousness. Um, this one's, you might think, well, what does courageousness mean? Like, I'd say I'm courageous, but what does that actually mean? It's all about kind of being accountable. So if you're to do, if you're coming to one of our assessment centers and you're someone who's, you know, constantly putting forward ideas, you know, not afraid to say the wrong thing, but you're constantly trying and you want to be, be able to be able to contribute and that sort of thing. It's all about standing up and being accountable. Um, outcome focused as well. So being able to recognize, you know, okay, well, what is the key objective here and how do we actually accomplish that? Um, we want to see it's like sort of results driven. It's a really good way of being able to, to identify can you listen to the key details? Can you meet certain criteria that the uh, clients are asking for, essentially? Um, growth minded, team focused, they're a bit self explanatory. Growth minded is all about being able to open to doing things in different ways. Team focused is obviously being able to work in a team um, and being focused on working as part of a team and not just being the sole driver of, of things, because um, that's how we get that kind of different, different thinking is being able to bring others in, see their viewpoints, and understand how we could maybe move forward with that idea um instead of your own sort of thing passion for business technical skill as well the technical skill is is probably more relevant for maybe roles which are actually te technical based so software development maybe um business consultant obviously i think that's probably a bonus having i um, having an understanding of maybe like ibm's technical offerings but not critical um it's always like a nice to have in that sort of sense um innovation and effective communication also something really clear as well so i would say if you can remember those sort of things and maybe include them in examples that you have of where you have demonstrated those throughout your applications, um, definitely put you in good stead for, for potentially advancing or, or no, with a role with us. Um, and most importantly, be yourself as well. So we don't want to have someone come and apply who you say you're this, this and this, but then when you actually come, oh, well, actually, no, that's not quite right. That's not quite right. Just be yourself. You know, we're not asking for the same person we want you know different people to apply um, and share their experiences and be able to to, be, to say what's unique about them um, and why that resonates with us as well which is always really important um, and then i'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about this one so this one's probably the most relevant so you kind of understand what our process kind of looks for and if you apply what kind of stages you would be expected to go through so the first one would be apply so those links that i provided in the chat that would be the first starting point and it's like say you just kind of fill in your details bit of information about you um and then what we do is is we then check that you're eligible great perfect move you on to the next stage and the next stage would be online assessment so this is kind of a bit broad um but it essentially involves a uh, trait based assessment and it involves a application form so you'd be required to fill them both out um the trait, I think, takes about 10 to 15 minutes, and it's all about identifying certain traits about yourself. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a pass or fail sort of thing. It just helps us make the best decision alongside your, your application form as well. So don't worry about completing it and thinking you have to pass it. There's no pass mark, okay? It's just a, we, we get information about what it kind of, kind of means as to, uh, to how you potentially uh, resonate with some of the things that we do, culture, that sort of thing. And then the application form is a, is a fixed template. So it'll ask you to fill out different areas. It would be the basic information about yourself, um, your education. So like, what, what did you study? What did you do? Where did you do it? Um, and then work experience, that sort of thing. And then also those competencies as well. So it'd be like, give us an example. You worked in a team and provided a good outcome for a, for a client or something like that. Um, and we'll be wanting to see like different examples of how you demonstrated them. But there is a character limit, right? So you have to be mindful to fit in the, in the word limit. Sorry, not not um, not character. It is word limit. So there'll be and it will specify that as well. So make full use of it. You know, we don't want to see 100 words and 300 word spaces. You know, make sure you're really having a good think and, and putting some good examples in there. So once you then fill 
tackling both of those objectives, uh, it then gets sent to one of our early professional managers. So it's that pastoral care team that I was telling you about. They actually review both and be able to decide, okay, yep, I think they're suitable for an assessment centre, move them to an assessment centre. Um, or they might decide, no, I don't think they're the right fit for us. Maybe it's a no from, from at the moment. So at that point, they determine whether you progress or not. And then if they do, you then get to an exploration session, which is assessment centre. Um, the name hasn't really stuck since we started using exploration session, so I still like to mention it is an assessment centre. Um, and that's where you'll come and do a group activity and you'll have a presentation slash interview with us as well. Um, and you'll be presenting to early professional managers as well. So they're, they're very much involved in this process and you'll get to meet quite a few of them as well. Um, and then the group exercise is a group exercise. Can't tell you too much about that um, because it does have to be a surprise, but I can tell you it's a group exercise. You'll be working with others essentially. And then after you've completed that, we then have a, a good feedback session and determine whether you'd pass the assessment center or unfortunately you might not pass and it would be um, closing out your application at that point. But if you are successful, you then move on to the final session, which is a matching interview. So this is basically where your application form, your trait assessment, that gets viewed by actual managers who have a role um, for an intern for a 12 month placement. And they basically go in and look at all the people who have passed in the exploration session, look at, you know, their interests to see whether they align with their role. And then they might actually reach out to someone like me or my colleague, Emma, and say, I really like the look of this person. Please, can we set up an interview? Because I think that could be a good match for my role. Um, and the key thing about this is you just have to remember that it's a two way process. OK, so you need to find the best role for yourself, but we also need to find the best candidate for the role as well. So. If a manager reaches out to me and then I reach out to you and say, I've got this role, this is the job description, this is the title, this is where it's based, um, would you like to go for the interview? At that point, you can say no, or you can say yes. I usually say, at least say, say yes, because yes, okay, you've got a job description, but you might actually learn a lot more out from the interview. So it's always worth kind of doing that first. So you could go say yes and you can go and do the interview. And then at that point, the hiring manager can decide whether I don't think it was a good fit or I think it was a good fit. Can we please give them an offer? I would then go back to yourselves and then I would say, look, the manager would like to offer. Did you like the role? Would you accept sort of thing? Um, and at that point as well, you can say, mm, I don't think it was what I'm looking for. Sorry, but the time. Or you can be like, yeah, no, that think it's a perfect match. Um, it doesn't mean it's the end of the road at all. If you say no, it just means you go back into matching. Another manager can select you for an interview and then you can go down that sort of route. Um, so it's not the end of the road, but we just have to say that we we can't guarantee everyone a role who gets to match. OK, so the reason why we say that is because we don't want to put a quota on the number of people who could pass an exploration session. So everyone has the same chance. You're not competing against one another. You can all make it to matching. That's not a problem. But just bear in mind that we all obviously have a certain amount of roles available. And if we have more candidates than we have roles, then some people won't be able to get a role. But we think that's the fairest way of doing it so that everyone at least has the opportunity to get there because it would be wrong of us to, to stop someone from getting the opportunity before um, just because we have a certain number of roles like it. I don't think it would be fair. So that's why we do that. And then that's it. I mean, I say that's it. Yeah, it's a long process, Baron. Like, I appreciate that. But... Um, at least you can kind of know what stage is what is coming up and prepare yourself for that as well. OK. So I appreciate I've been rambling on for a good while. Um, I am going to stop there. That is the content that I have um, to cover. Um, what I will say is that if you are interested on what 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 we what we do at IBM and you want to learn a bit more further, um, obviously register your interest as well for the roles. That's probably an important one. Um, we do have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube pages, um, which are quite are quite good. I would definitely recommend the YouTube one. Um, they have a lot of videos on there about like what it is actually like to work at IBM, and, um, especially for our apprenticeship scheme. They've got some um, apprentices who basically took their phone, video, whatever, with them throughout their whole day. So you can kind of see, well, okay, what does a life actually look like um, in a day of an apprentice? That's usually really, really good and can provide some good insights about what it's like. Yes, okay, it's an apprenticeship, but it's it's basically the same. It's a role with IBM. It's They still do real work and it's still very much relevant. So 
um, it's a really good one to, to have a look at as well. Um, and also a link to the IBM skills build as well. So as I spoke about the IBM badges and the free um, IBM skills as well, I think that could be a really good one to take away from today. So you can have a little look at that Google. Um, like you say, it's, it's relevant for our roles, but it's also relevant for, for roles in other companies as well. So um, so yeah, so with, so with that, I will open the floor and we'll have a little look in the chat to see if there's any questions um, and, get, and get answering some of them with the time that we've got left. Perfect. Thank you very much, Liam. We have quite a lot. We've had quite the group chat experience here. Um, people trying to spill the, spill the beans on group assessments, but uh, we'll go <laughs> through them accordingly. So do you have any advice okay, um, for new employees starting at IBM? Says Darren. For new employees? Oh, yeah. Um, I would try and say no to things as little as possible. I think... If you're starting off new and you're starting off fresh, try and get involved as much as possible, um, especially if you're an intern, right? So I think it's going to be the first kind of full-time job that you've had. You obviously want to get a lot out of the 12 months. Um, I was very much in the, the impression that I don't know what I want to do, but why not try as many things as possible so that I can basically say to myself, okay, no, I really didn't enjoy that. I know that that's not something I want to do. Um, but unless you say yes to those opportunities, then you won't, you won't really know. So kind of you get busy from the get-go, but at least then that helps you understand what you actually want to do um, as a potential mm -hmm. job. Perfect. Um, next one, are there any intern positions in London and in what areas of technology? Oh, okay. So yes, we do have a lot in, in London. We primarily have the business consultants based in London, but also the technical consultants as well. Um, and what I'll probably say is, is the, the difference between the two is – Business consultants are quite general in the sense of business activity. So they could be um, probably ones which aren't technically related to anything. So they could be working on strategies. They could be working on working with clients directly with their needs. But the technical consultant ones are actually working with those technologies. And you could be like, say, for example, a specialist in one technology. And you could be that kind of like subject matter expert on that technology and work with clients doing that specific technology. But you would be expected to kind of know a lot about that technology um so i would say if you've got a, a technical background and you have a, an added interest in them you don't have to be an expert i'm not saying i'm not saying that at all but if you've got that yes i've got a passion for technology i'd love to learn about one certain technology and be like a, an advocate for it i think that's probably a better route um and they're based in london as well we do have some in manchester as well they tend to be like our two consulting hubs but um yeah we do have a lot in london so that that could be a good fit Perfect. There you go. Um, as well as Mohammed says, eagerly awaiting to join as an intern for IBM in London. I'm sure you'll get it, Mohammed. All the best of luck to you. Um, Bilal says, how do you measure the success or impact of your work at IBM? Oh, that is a really good one. So one thing I probably didn't mention is, um, and this is applies to a lot of a lot of roles, the internships, graduates and stuff. We have this thing called Checkpoint. Um, which is basically like a reflection tool, right? So you can set yourself goals. Your manager can set goals. You work with your manager to complete it as well. And it's like you do it every half of the year. So for the first half of the year, you'd have a reflection period where you look at certain goals, your metrics and stuff. Did you hit them? Um, justifications on how you've added that sort of value. And then your manager sits down and reads through everything that you've done and can determine like your success metrics as well. So did you hit those goals? Yep, great you know, that gets noted and put down for any sort of like promotion, salary increases and stuff, that sort of thing. So they're a, they're a good time to really focus on what it is you've actually done in that time period. Um, but it's also a good way of reflecting with your manager to understand, okay, well, what are our um, KPIs, that sort of thing for the second half? What do I need to do to be able to achieve those, those metrics that maybe you didn't do in the first half? So um, they're really good sessions and everybody does them. Interns do them slightly differently because they do them at three months, six months, at 12 months. But the premise is still the same. You know, it's all about goal setting. It's all about understanding the KPIs and how can you meet them at those certain intervals as well. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect answer, Liam. You're perfect. There's perfect for these questions here. Um, <clears throat> uh, what barriers to entry do you need to break into any of these specialities? Sorry, could you just say that one just again? Sorry, I think I just, just lost you then. 
I'm sorry, so what barriers uh, to entry do you need to break into any of these specialities? Oh, okay. Um, that's an interesting question. I, I don't know what, whether you mean in terms of applying or if you mean in terms of like once you're with the business, how do you, what sort of barriers do you have there? Um, for me, I'd probably say a lot of barriers is getting things to get people to approve certain things. So I think where where I'm, I have a role where I speak with, so for example, the, the partnership that we have with Karima, for example, I have to get things that will probably approve my level and that could be very slow. Um, whereas I appreciate we, we'd like to be faster than that. I think that's one of the barriers that I have. Um, yeah. One of the also barriers as well is probably if I wanted to move to different roles is being able to have that understanding of well, what is it that I need to have for the new role. Um, that can be a barrier, but I then also think it can be an opportunity uh, which IBM can also help with as well. So like, for example, with my apprenticeship, yes, it was a barrier, but they helped me overcome that barrier. And now it's, it's more of an opportunity sort of thing. So um, I would say in a lot of people's eyes, there are opportunities to, to, to overcome them and challenges rather than barriers. But I hope that kind of answers that question. If that helps. Yeah. Well, I'd just expand on that and say the barrier in the nine to five world is waiting on a five mm. most of the time. Um, <laughs> that's the world we live in. So uh, Bahad Chaudhry says, what prerequisites would I need to get a placement or internship at IBM? So I think, yeah, I think that's, I think as long as you're eligible, you've got every mm. chance in, in getting a role with us. So it's just making sure like with you check with your university, if you are on a three year course to make sure that you are eligible for the scheme, because that's the biggest barrier I'd say. Um, and then remember to be yourself as well. So find out what it is that is unique about yourself. Um, how can you set yourself apart from other people as well? So like I say, we're only open for a short amount of time because we have so many applications. So it's how do you stand out when people uh, read your application form? How can they remember you? Um, but also being truthful, right? So you don't want to be remembered because you lied on your application form, but just have a good think and put some good time inside that application because it is it, it stays with you throughout the whole application because it's reviewed at the start. It's then also reviewed by the uh, hiring manager as well if you make it to matching. It's also read by your interviewer at the assessment center. So it's it may seem like a tedious task, basically whatever, but it's the thing that gets you through the majority of it. So um, have a good look at the competencies that they ask for and have a good brainstorm on how you meet those different competencies, but also how you can provide different examples for each of them. Because if you say the same example for all of them, yes, okay, it might be true, but then in the eyes of the reader, it's just one example you've got, whereas you should you need to have more and that'll give you a better chance as well. Perfect. Amazing. And um, the question from Anna says, um, how should candidates prepare for interviews and are there any practice questions or exams on your website? Oh, so skills build's a good one, as I mentioned count, countless mm -hmm. times. That's always a good one to prepare and learn about how, so maybe, for example, there'll be uh, some tips and tricks on there about maybe how to do better in a group exercise, for example. That's always really good. Um, on our website, we actually do have uh, tips and tricks for graduate schemes as well. So if you go onto our uh, website, if you type in IBM careers, go on entry level and then go on graduates, they've got the different graduate schemes there. So software development, consulting, and actually give you really, really good information as to, okay, well, if you're interested, where's the starting block? Where do you want to go and start your research? What kind of things do you need to read and be knowledgeable about? I think for the software development one as well, there is practice questions on there um, with a place called Hacker Rank where you can go on to and have a look at some of the tests that a lot of kind of not just us, but other companies as well. They do certain tests that you can do um, mm. and what kind of level that we're looking for in terms of that technical ability. Um, so yeah, IBM careers, a really great one to go to. Um, I think it would be a good start point for you. Perfect. Perfect, Liam. Um, it's a good one from Eva. says, what do you think sets apart successful candidates who become long-term employees? Okay, so this, this one I probably haven't spoken much about, and I'll, I'll say it most because it's probably the thing that we see the most at assessment centers or in application forms is we don't see a lot of candidates who really want to work for IBM, okay, which isn't, obviously... It, <laughs> This is very high because I, I don't want to tell you to ignore it um, because that's the same with everyone. But that is what makes you stand out. So, and it's perfectly fine, right? So I, I get it. When I applied for internships, there were a number of companies that I applied for, right? And it's how do you how do you say you're interested in all of them? 
Um, what I would say is if you definitely do not think that IBM is a company that you resonate with, then don't, I wouldn't worry about applying. If it's some, a company that you're like, I like this about it, I like this about it, I like this about it, that's great. Make sure you include that as to why, because that really helps being able to, to be, uh, to show that, okay, uh, okay, you might not be like a, a quantum advocate. So you're like, oh yeah, perfect fit, IBM, quantum and me. But it might be like, I really liked what Liam said about the, the business resource groups, about the people with diverse abilities. Like that might be something you're passionate with and you're all about inclusivity. That's really, really good. Like that's a really good way of showing the reader that you would be a good fit at IBM. You know, we'd have to find you the right role, but as a person, that would be really, really good. Um, I think that's that's something that we don't get a lot of because maybe people don't do enough research to find out that sort of information. So do your research about IBM, find a few things that really resonate with you that you can actually include in your application form and that will that will make you really stand out. Uh, perfect. To expand on that though, do you know if you're aware of the percentage of people who go into long-term employee with IBM if they've already had an internship or apprenticeship? Oh, Changes year on year. Um, I don't have a percentage. Yeah, it it, it obviously depends on because each year we don't have the same roles become available. It's always depending on you know okay, well who who actually needs a graduate? You know, submit the approvals, you get the approvals, that sort of thing. But um, to put it in perspective, we look at doing that intern to grad before we uh, we um, advertise to external. So if you are an intern and you are interested in applying back you get the opportunity to apply that first if that makes sense and then like you say it's down to the business to decide yep that person i want to review them for my role they seem like a good fit and they've done a lot in their 12 months to prepare for that as well so that's why we do the careers academy where we put on that event so you could go to different talks about different opportunities we put that on at around your eight month mark so that you've still got four months to to kind of maybe do some shadowing, look at the area that you're interested to apply back for and really bolster that application before you then apply it with 10 months into your, um, to your internship. So you get all of that kind of help and support, which externals don't get. So you do get a lot of support with that um, and you have every chance, you know, of getting a graduate role with us. Perfect. Um, I mean, uh, was as Liam, were you nervous to host this event? Uh, they said they would be. So yes, <laughs> I I I took over the this opportunity to do these sort of webinars a year and a half ago. Uh, I've had a few under my belt now, but yes, I still get nervous. Luckily, I can't see all your faces because otherwise that would make me really nervous. <laughs> I just the number at the end. Um, how can they they contact you if they have any further questions? So we're able to get the finish up here. Oh, that, that's a brilliant question to to what I was just about to move on to actually. So what I will do is I will post a, a two email addresses that I've got. Um, they are for two different schemes. So post them in there. So you've got a email address, um, which is like a collective shared email address. So it's me, 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 myself looks after the labs hiring one specifically, but other people have access to it can help as well. Um, and that you can you could email for software development, university placements, or graduate roles as well. If you have any questions, that is absolutely fine. Um, for the UK underscore students um, email address as well, technology and business consultant university placement schemes, you can email them for that. Um, or any university placement schemes, for example, you can always um, send them an email, whether it be the HR, the marketing one as well, design, that sort of thing any questions you know we all monitor that we can we get back to you um also linkedin as well if you also want to connect me on linkedin and ask any questions i'm always happy to respond mm -hmm. to them when i can um i do get quite a few but happy to you know get there eventually and respond to you no problem perfect well thank you very much Liam. um also, also as i said before we did a bit on advice but more for the people here what advice can you give them if they want to join ibm on internship or just any opportunity that sounds good. Good stuff. I remember everyone that will be um, recorded. It will be up on our YouTube and our website in the coming days. So uh, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Thank you very much, Liam. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. And I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Love it. Thank, thank you very, very much, much as well. Um, really appreciate Great. your support. Perfect. Cheerio. Bye-bye.